Hello and welcome to the MHG podcast, the one week delayed part two of the 2023 game of the year, the follow up to part one. Uh, life could be very miserable, life could be very, very dark, and life could actually be very, very cruel. So we're here in an attempt to bring you a bit of light, a bit of joy, and a bit of humanity. Hi, Bradley, and I'm joined by the robotic alien, no, he's definitely human, Stu. How are you doing, Stu? Yeah, well, I, I wish I had cybernetic parts, that's definitely a case. So, yeah, yeah, the reason we got a week delay is because I've got um, uh, terrible back problems at the moment. I've got a slip disc, and uh, just Google it, see what that does. It's not it's not nice, but, um, mm. yeah, we're soldiering on. We're still playing games, and we've still got a, a top, well, top five left to do. So, yeah, mm. looking forward to that, at least. And in a, in a forward... I always forget what the word is when you sort of like you say something that might fit a bit of foreshadowing. If only you could get yourself a nice bit of chrome, Stu, mm. a nice bit of chrome. Oh, yeah, yes, please. <laughs> um, so, yeah, without further ado, uh, we're just going to get straight into it because it's a part two. So we don't need to do segues um, into, into gaming talk because it's a part two. So, yeah. So carrying on from last week, we've done our... Not even our bottom six, five because we said it wasn't in, like any game could be in the top in, in the top ten that we've played this year and um, stuff. But so, show just take it away. What you've been playing that's number six or whatever it is five. <laughs> Do it, show because I'm blowing it. Don't worry, it's at number five, and uh, for me, it's uh, that theatre rhythm final bar line. This is the one that's really hard to say, um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's the final, basically Final Fantasy rhythm game. Um, yeah, and. I, I, it's such a it's such a good title that it kind of it kind of blows your mind that it's not not only is it not on high on people's lists but it doesn't seem to exist on people's lists it just seems to have dropped out of popular memory and discourse and I, I don't really know why I think you know my best guess is that because it's not it originated on the the 3ds so you had the stylus to do movements with which obviously helps you know it's it's, it's a good thing to 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 do it's good fun. It's a good input method for this kind of game. Um, so it might be the absence of that. And it might be because it has, you know, it's broadly the same game as its predecessors. It's just got new arrangements in terms of music. However, the thing is, it's by far the best one of those. And when those games were coming out, they were getting really high scores. And you do have that kind of drop-off effect, don't you, of like... It, even if a sequel does something perfectly, it's like, oh yeah, but it's just more of the same, you know. And hmm. I think that colors, it's no one day. Yeah, it colours people's perception a little bit. And um, but I'm here to tell you that it's if you've not played it, play it because it's got tons of new gameplay innovations. So that the way that you track the bar on the screen and the yeah you know, the way that you interact with the music has been added to and perfected. It's got. Uh, just an absolute huge amount of accessibility options, like an astonishing amount of them, mm. um, just to make it cater to you. And you can dial the game, like through the accessibility and a combination of that and difficulty, you can dial it to be whatever game you want it to be, really. If you want to just be like listening to Final Fantasy music, you basically can. Um, right to, if you want to be able to perfect every single frame of music within every single song to get every rank perfect. You can do it anywhere on the spectrum between those two things. It looks amazing. The structure of the missions is more like an RPG than it has been in the past as well. It's got much more RPG elements. Go back and listen to the episode, which I'll put in the show notes if you want more details. But that's it for now. It's a fantastic, fantastic game. and really deserves to be where it is. Yeah, I, I, what I tried of it, I thought it was it was good. Just I just can't get on with rhythm games because I have no rhythm, um, and I've always sucked. At them. But the accessibility options meant I could play it and enjoy it for the time I did spend with it. Um, legally bought and owned on my Steam Deck via emulation, um, of course. And yeah, uh, but yeah, no, I, I I I enjoyed what I could play of it. It's not my sort of game. I just can't do rhythm games. But the quality is definitely there, and I'm glad you got what you wanted from it. 
Yeah, no, I, I totally get that. It's one of those that it, it's totally Marmite, which would be another reason why it doesn't show up a lot. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah I, definitely for me. So what, for uh, you, what was your number five? Uh, Vember, um, which was a game I had with not my eye on, uh, but I was never sure what it would might be like, because it could look like it might be all silo over substance and stuff like that. But essentially... It's a short narrative cooking game, which is how they describe it in the blurb. Um, uh, you play as basically the... Um, I love rubbish with names, so I do, I do apologise to the developers. Uh, but you basically play as the uh, the mother of an Indian uh, couple who emigrate to Canada, have a baby. Um, it's like set in the 80s, and it's basically about their, their life um, told through Vember's eyes. Um, where she tells her story through cooking. Um, the good times, the bad times, the truly horrific times, um, the coming-of-age stuff that happens with her child, their own coming-of-age, because when you're an immigrant moving to a, a foreign country, it is completely alien to you, and it's about the, the clash of cultures. But it's all told through the medium of food, and cooking um, and it's a game that just blends like a very linear path of just narrative storytelling with just like basically very nice and simple cooking uh, mini games in a way but not mini game. I hate that term mini game because it has a negative um, in, like connotation when you say it but it's like these basically these moments where you do cooking and you're cooking actual real Indian dishes and they try to be as accurate as possible with what the ingredients are the processes that are needed for them and the actual cooking itself is just so well done and the food despite having this um this kind of pastely animation, like paper cutout style look to it, just can make you salivate because you can almost smell it in the way that it's presented and uh, the passion that goes into the like the description of the cooking and the history of the food, whether it's a family dish or a traditional Indian dish or or whatever. And it's just that whole passion and that whole bit of storytelling just all comes together absolutely perfect. It's only a couple of hours long, the game. It's not very long at all. Um, but it leaves a very lasting impression with you. And I just can't recommend it enough just for sort of like the storytelling, the just the way it's presented, the food, everything is just absolutely amazing. Yeah, it, it looks wonderful. And it's a good it's a good time to, to reiterate that thing that we've said a few times about, you know, people going, oh, you know, why, why would you bother like watching a Twitch streamer play a game or something, right? Because <laughs> uh, the, the quick answer is always, well, you, um, you like footy, yeah? Does that mean that yeah. you you like playing? Do you like watching it on the TV as well? <laughs> you know, it's like yeah. it can be a spectator sport. And I think one of the things that this and another game that is no doubt going to crop up a little bit later on are games that I would I really want to watch as spectator sports. Um, and it obviously sport is a you know <laughs> bit of a stretch when it comes to Vember, but um, it's something that I want to watch other people experience um, because. There's so much in the visuals, in the narrative, in the interactions that appeal to me, but the gameplay doesn't. Um, mm -hmm. And I think one of the big misses for me this year, or last year, in 2023, was Alan Wake, because the gameplay didn't appeal to me. But I've enjoyed watching other people play it. And if you get somebody who can convey their interest and their passion having a go at it, and you can watch it, then, then that's almost as good. It certainly fulfills a niche, and it, and it fulfills uh, that kind of you know drive. And I really want to do that with Ember. So uh, again, yeah, I suppose it comes back to like, yeah, if if you're listening to this and you you don't fancy playing these games or you can't afford them, it might be worth just watching somebody else play them and see what you get out of that. Because I'm going to definitely do that with Ember. Or you know, donate to our Patreon and stuff like that, and maybe I'll start doing playthroughs. Just, just absolutely, you know. yeah. There you go. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's um, yeah. I, I I love it. I get why some wouldn't, um, and it's one of those that I'm sitting here now going, ah, oh, I don't know, five, maybe higher, uh, because it such was the impact it had on me. I, I I totally get it. I I'm I'm okay with. If there's a game that you like the look of, but you don't know if you're going to play it or get on with the game mechanics, 
I, I think it's absolutely fine to watch a tri- Twitch stream or a YouTube um, stream. Uh, I honestly think there are... Uh, you could almost do something like with a game like this, like you used to do with the old cinema releases, where it would release in January the film, uh, but then you wouldn't get the home DVD release or like VHS release until October of that year, because it was like a 10 month gap, and then you had to wait another year for it to then come on TV and stuff like that. I would be okay where if there was rules in place to say this game cannot be put on YouTube. Um, in a full playthrough for X months after release to, so it doesn't cannibalise those sales. I'm okay with stuff like that, but then allowing it because I think the more people that get to experience it in whatever way possible, the better. Because it, if it can inspire someone storytelling-wise, great. That that We could inspire the next generation of game makers or, or storytellers. But if the gameplay can inspire someone who plays it, that's even better because you get the next generation of like people who make games as well. So, But, yeah, if, if you find whatever way you can to experience this um, is what I'm trying to say because it's really, really good. And it's short. It's short. It's only about, I want to say, three to four hours at most. Yeah, yeah. No, that's good. Yeah, there's there's so much room for varying lengths of video game. You know, there really is. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Really is. yeah. I want my 60-hour, 100-hour epics only, please. <laughs> no. Talking of 100-hour epics, Joe, what's your number four? Oh, nicely set up. My, I had to have one segue, didn't I, really? So, come on. Well, it wouldn't be you if you didn't. So, yeah, no, no I quite agree. And at number four, I've got uh, Cyberpunk twenty. 20- 77 Phantom Liberty. Uh, it was all right. Let's move on. Yeah, this is not bad. <laughs> on to number three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, it's it's hard to kind of overstate how good this is. And the only reason, I mean, it, it's one of those that could be number one on any given day, yeah. you know. It's just, the. I guess the only reason, only reason it's uh, only number four <laughs> is only because uh, it's a DLC. But it's a DLC that they've done what they do so well. Uh, Project Red, which is they un- they play their own game. I mean, a lot probably because they have to fix it because you have to fix bugs for years <laughs> yeah. afterwards. Um, and then they go right. Oh, we've worked out from this brilliant game. We've worked out what the brilliant, brilliant, brilliant bits are, and we'll make a DLC that is purely just those brilliant, brilliant, brilliant bits. And so, what it does so well is it gives you the right duration of travel between areas and. It gives you the right duration of conversations. And I feel like it's actually... I mean, I'm not going to go into it in much detail because we've covered it on so many different podcasts at this point. But what it does so brilliantly in a paragraph is, yeah, it makes the... It it tightens up every little area. So it makes conversations slightly longer, I feel. It makes the traversal a little bit shorter, perhaps. It makes the gunplay a bit more intense and have a little bit more of a purpose. Um, It has that benefit of being focused in one area, which makes that side of things a bit easy. And narratively, it has a very, very, very tight line. So it's just that ultimately distilled, concentrated edition of Cyberpunk, which was already, you know, (laughs) an absolute all-timer. And for me now, it's it's definitely in my top 20 of all time already, I would say. Mm. It's just an amazing game. So just to add to this, if I had played this last year, this would be in my top five, possibly even flirting with number one. Um, Because, as you said, this is... I've not finished the main game yet. Um, I have finished Phantom Liberty, uh, because anyone who doesn't know, um, it's seamlessly integrated and it gives you a point in the story where it goes, hey, this is open now. You might want to check it out. Um, So you do. And it, you can switch between the two as you will, and it seems to just integrate so perfectly. Um, so I've completed Phantom Liberty, um, and I am uh, coming towards the end, I think. I've hit a point of no return mission, so I'm kind of going through just doing other bits at the moment, uh, mopping up some other other stuff and, and what have you. Um, but it's a, the whole game as a whole is just... it's creeping up there was one of my all-timers uh, where I don't know I'd need to sit down and have a think about that uh, but in terms of AAA games it's probably my favourite ever AAA game I can't think of another 
like major triple A game that it, it's as good as this, apart from like The Witcher. Uh, the Witcher 3, uh, which is also CD Project Red, which is quite the turnaround considering what, what I had to say about it on release. Um, but I, I, I played it, and yeah, you're right, the gun playing it, the, 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 the structure of how people talk to each other, the emotion it conveys, um, the way it could go from a slog, and when I say a slog, I don't mean a slog in a negative sense, like slow paced, drawing you into something and, and then just going bang with these big action set pieces and an ending that you choose that left me dumbfounded. I kind of, like the ending of it and there's, uh, those decisions you have to make and I had to like, oh, and it puts a time, a decision I didn't want to make, but it puts a timer on it and I'm going, ah. Oh, so you have to choose with either your heart or your head and make that decision and that puts a lot of stress on you in a good way and then I get to the end and I make my decisions and it all happens and then it cuts to cuts the credit and I just sat there and let the credits run I could have skipped I just let them run and I was just like in a daze I was just in an absolute daze just going what have I just experienced this is amazing um so much so and i've put on like four we use on, on, on real book putting that i want to see them do um, i want to see backstories of like uh pan am of reed and uh not so much river because he's boring i don't like river he's a dickhead uh despite his dead family whatever don't like him try to try to sex me up <laughs> i don't want that thank you very much like you just found out about your dead family members don't Ugh, you know, whatever, you creepy bastard. But anyway, but yeah, those stories. Uh, but the fact that this game somehow mixes action with stealth, with traversal, with detective noir stuff, uh, there's some spooky stuff that goes on in there as well. And it adds it all in really, really well. So take any number of the characters you meet and delve into their backstories. An hour or two to three hours long, um, add on missions in that world, give you a set character, and I say call it um, Night City Tales or Night City Stories, whatever. Release them episodically, like it's a TV show anthology type thing, like Tales from the Crypt, that kind of thing, or the um, uh, the Twilight Zone, that kind of anthology type thing. Release them. I'd play the shit out of that. They'd make mega bucks, and they've already got the engine, they've got the characters, they've got the world to play in. Everything is there, and they can go and do it. Um, even the bloody car races are amazing. and that, that, They're fun. Um, it's just, yeah, it's brilliant. Um, I know it went aside from uh, Phantom Liberty, but bloody hell, what a game. It would have been right up there, possibly my, my top one or two, if it played in last year and hadn't just played it in the last couple of weeks. And I can't blame you. So, what was your actual number four then? Well, I went from Cyberpunk to Steampunk. Uh, uh, I'm segwaying all over the place. Look at that. Segwaying on my ass, yeah. I said that to a girl once and she didn't like it. Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, Steam World Build. Um, I've been playing. I know I've been playing it because I spoke about it before. It's my number four. Um, and it's a a city builder um, with a, a, like a, a decent like mission structure to it. It's, like, it's, a, basic, it's, a, it's a basic city builder on, on the surface. Um, and that I do that. I choose that term deliberately, where you have to plop your buildings, your roads, every and expand all that. But then you have to go underground, scratch beneath that surface, and then you do mining, um, and resource management, and stuff like that. Uh, you have to mine different materials, and the idea is there's an end goal to it, um, where you go, go, go. You build all your stuff. You take on enemies because some enemies appear. Events happen, and you basically need to get a rocket and fly to safety. Um, and it's just like I would say a four to five hour game on a single playthrough and then you get unlocks and stuff like that that change the game slightly and there's different areas you can play in um, that change it all slightly and again there's like just so much that you can add to it and it's just a brilliant example of a city builder and whilst it's not my favourite game of the year I like city builders um and it's 
does something different to most other City builders. And when I was expecting City Skylines 2 to be probably my top game of the year, and it just was such a disappointment, to around the same sort of time that this came out, it just felt so fresh and so well put together that I just absolutely loved it. Um, now it is bettered by something else that's on my list in a bit. Um, but it is such a good experience. It takes everything that's good about the Steam World 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 steam um and takes it into another genre again and i think the steam world games are so good at going look here's a world here's a job we spoke about this before this is what we could do in it um and like just i just had so much fun with this um and what i've been able to do now is go right i've played it i played it through i've taken a break but i know i can go back and play it fresh again with unlocks will make it feel like a different game or you know a, a, a different experience to what it was last time uh but with the knowledge i've also got because it, even though it's, it's a roguelike without being a roguelike as well and that's hard to convey but it just nails every little mechanic to make what is for me an exceptional experience um in a genre that was at some point dying on its ass, in my opinion, uh, because I've played so many, I just got all right. But then I've played two this year out of the many that I've played that have just really stood out, and this is number two on that list. So, but yeah, it's it's brilliant, lovely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, it's good that it's uh, it's there's a kind of mini revival almost. Nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so. What's this totally brand spanking new game that you've got at your number three, Stu? Ah, well, in, <laughs> in, uh, in very much in the vein of the previous game, it's it's a combination of the two. So it's Quake 2 called The Machine. So if last year they re-released Quake 2, but it was a, like a remaster, basically, um, it's not a full remake, a remaster with a lot of tweaks. Um, not worth going through all what they are, but it's made it you know much more sort of in line with what you'd expect from a from a modern game, but still Quake Two at the core, which is a cracking game. But the reason it's come to my list and why it's come so highly is because there was the, the team that put this together has created a whole set of new levels, so a whole new campaign, which is about uh, I'd say between four and six hours long, called Call of the Machine. And it's absolutely fantastic. I'd say the gameplay is as good as the original game's gameplay. And you just can't can't really moan about having more Quake 2 because it's, it's excellent. And it, it's one of those that kind of at the time a lot of people were like, ah, oh, well, you know, it's not as good as Quake. Um, it's more about the multiplayer. And then, of course, that spun off into Quake 3 being a full multiplayer-only title. But... I honestly, I loved Quake 2 at the time. I love it now. It holds up really, really well. Looks fantastic. And the new campaign is, is really, really excellent. And yeah, I, I'm not sure what really sparked it as being quite so good. But just everything about it just slots together for me. And yeah, really great stuff. For thoroughly enjoyable. I, I guess it's just it was a purely enjoyable experience from from start to finish with masterful level design and, and excellent gunplay and just that kind of arcade experience really, really hit with me. And yeah, totally fantastic. Yeah, it's a, a weird job for me, uh, a weird game. Like Quake, I, I, I played it in the 90s, 2000s, um, and I had a great time, especially Quake 3 Arena. Um, Quake 2 is one that passed me by, um, and I don't know why. Um, so I, maybe I'll give it a go. Uh, but I tried the Quake remaster. I didn't get on with it um, yeah. at all. I don't know why. Uh, my eyes were really, really, really bad when I played it, in all fairness, uh, where I had um, not just my blindness, but it was really blurry vision, <clears throat> and I couldn't see like I couldn't see light and dark properly. It was just a really horrible time, and I tried to play it, um, and it's bit dark to play so maybe I'll, I'll dig it out again and give it another go but uh yeah i'm glad again I, i'm always happy when someone finds something that they like even if it's not something that personally i got on with or was even on my radar uh but it's on my radar now because of you Stu. well i think i'm i think it's free if you already own quake 2 which i assume you do um so you should be able to access it for free 
fingers crossed if I'm not getting it all wrong. I do own Quake 2, yes, but not Quake 2 RTX, which is free. But that's not Quake 2 Remaster, is it? That's something completely different. It is, yeah. Yeah, they are separate um, because I think they're different teams, so... Yeah, I don't know. See, it's one of yeah. those where I, I own Quake 2. I don't know if it's the remastered. Did you get the remastered version if you own the original version anyway? Was that what it is? I don't know. Yes, you do. You do. I think it's only the RTX yeah, yeah. thing that's separate, but I could be wrong on that even. But yeah, just see what you've got and have a go. But um, yeah, no, it, it, just an amazing project all around, really. It feels like a, a, a high-budget fan project, you know, in all the best kind of ways. So... Yeah, wonderful stuff. Both projects are getting better and better as well, by the way. But like, they used to be, uh, like, they used to create something in the end that came from fan projects. But I think we're seeing more and more fan projects now that are just like, this is as good as, if not as good as, if not better than the original game it's built on. Um, which is just like just a weird place to be in that the uh, the, the bedroom coders are back. Yeah, it's such a big way. I think uh, maybe something we'll cover in the, in the year at some point. Yeah, definitely, and I think partly it's because people fall in love, like we were talking about cy- cyberpunk. People fall in in love with those worlds, and they just they want more of it. Yeah, mm. yeah, definitely. So moving on from arenas and quakes and shooting people in the face to something that's just as violent, Stu, something that's Ooh. just as cerebral. And that is moving lasers about to solve puzzles in the Talos Principle 2. <laughs> um, which, this shows how stacked the end of the year has been, by the way. Because at one point, this was my game of the year. Yeah. And I was like, oh, nothing's going to beat this. Um, and then stuff did. Um, um, I don't know what to say about the Talos Principle 2. It takes everything that was good about the first, um, expands on it. And what uh, so, do you know? Usually, when you get a game and like they do this thing, and it's like, oh, I really like this game, and then they go, oh, we'll try and do this with it, and it's like, oh, that doesn't work. Why did you need to? We don't need to expand on the law of this game. Just do do the puzzle things. We don't care about the story. Just the puzzle stuff. Um, so the Talos Principle Two went from having like oh, all the law and everything in these computers, uh, fire text files that, to be honest, I didn't really read too much on. I I, I ended up reading a, uh, I'm watching a an overview of what it was all meant to mean. But I was like, oh, I don't care about this. It's all too small the text anyway. I don't care. Um, and too much text. I can't read too much text. Do you know? Do you know how annoying it is when someone just goes on and on and on? Stu, you're just like, ah, oh, can't. <laughs> uh, you probably don't know what that's I've like. I've got no no conception um, of that. No no. no, no, no frame of reference for that, is nope. there? Anyway, so they took all the text-based stuff that was in there and turned it into like almost like a uh, a, a funny voice acted and cinematic story that expanded on the law and everything. And it shouldn't work, but it does. And it just helps guide the game through in a really good way without losing what made the original Talos principle so good, which was the puzzle solving. Um, and as I said, uh, I think at my time when we recorded the podcast for this, I said, I like that I've had levels that would take me five minutes to do because I just read it and went, oh, yeah, this is nice. I get this. And others that I spent hours, I spent like a good two hours in one of them because my brain just could not compute what it was. But it was clearly logical what I had to do. So as so I was like, I'm going to do this and work it out. And it took me forever. I went down other stuff in the end, came back and went, oh, yeah, that was it. Um, and the way it builds your knowledge is just exceptional, which games like this which are essentially glorified logic puzzles in 3D, um, have to have a certain amount of learning as you go. Um, But without hand-holding, so you've got to discover it. And this is what this game does really, really well. And stuff you'll learn early might not make any sense until much, much later. So, like, you learn to lose, use, like, portals in some elements, and then you kind of like, right, okay, well, I haven't had to use that again. I don't know why. And then you come to another level a bit further down the line, and then, ah, oh, that makes sense now. And you learn about maybe using... 
how to lift things in the air. You're like, oh, okay, so that I could do. Right, that makes sense now. And it just does all that brilliant, but it's also got the mythology that goes with it, and like the, um, it has questions on existence and the meaning of life and all that. So you can ignore all that if you want to just do the puzzles. But the fact it's now done voice acted and you've got characters in it as well, that just adds so well to it. Um, and the worlds are amazing. There's secrets to discover. Um, I've still not finished it, finished it. But, oh, my God, it is just an overall experience and one of the best puzzlers I've played in many, many a year. Um, it's ten times better than The Witness and it doesn't have Jonathan Blow behind it. Which is always a good thing, yeah. 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 No. So even if it was a 9 out of 10, that would take it to a 10 out of 10. Perfect. Yeah, no, it's another one that I would really, really enjoy watching somebody play through and, and solve the puzzle so I can just wrap myself up in the world and enjoy that, you know. Yeah, without Not me, though. I kind of bumble my way through some of the puzzles in all fairness where I see it and just go, oh, I can't work out how, how RGB works all of a sudden <laughs> um, and stuff like that. Cause there's a lot of RGB-based puzzles in there as well. Right. Um, and I'm like, uh, I've got graphic designer. I'm going, well, I don't know, I can't remember RGB. <laughs> oh, well, never mind then. Uh, maybe not with not, not watch you then, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I, I, it's something I'd love to see played through, yeah. Yes, but yeah, it's really, really good. Um, and was my game of the year at one point. So, oh, the next two games are better be good. But talking of good, Stu, talking of good, take your time. Okay, let's put on the radio and let's hear what you've got to talk about now. <laughs> yeah, not bad, not bad at all, that segue. Yeah, I can a bit weaker than the others, bit weaker. Yeah, yeah so what I uh, have in my number two slot is going to be a surprise. It's because we I didn't cover it properly on the podcast for reasons I'll get into, uh, and it's Hi-Fi Rush. Um, so I, the reason that I didn't cover it properly at the time was because I was playing it on um, you know, Xbox Game Pass, and it was yeah. around the time when I, I stopped paying for Xbox Game Pass, and yeah. I was enjoying it, but uh, it hadn't really clicked with me. So Game Pass went, didn't have access to it, fine, no problem. Then months and months and months and months later... Right towards like the latter half of the year, I managed to get a key for it cheap and legitimately and played it through. And it clicked. It finally clicked with me. And I absolutely loved it. And it's just it's just pure for the thing the, the two main things that stand out are <clears throat> from a gameplay sort of perspective. Obviously it's uh it's an action game that's kind of like Devil May Cry or Bayonetta. But you have to do things, or you don't have to, but you, you succeed by doing things to the rhythm that's always going on in the background, which I know makes it a problem for yourself. Understandable. Mm-hmm. But when you get in, in tune with that rhythm, if you can, it, it makes it you know, a much better experience and, and really, really quite fascinating. And the second thing is the graphics, which are like legit some of the best graphics that have ever been produced. They're just, they're amazing. Uh, the, just the fidelity of them uh, it takes that jet set radio future aesthetic yes. really pushes it it mixes like the animation styles it kind of takes the philosophy if not like the outright you know style of the uh spider the, the across the spider verse you know into the spider verse films um changing frame rates and um making it stop motioning in places and just the way that whole stitches it all together just makes it feel like you're playing a cartoon in a, in a way that hasn't been done before. Uh, a yeah. complete like revolution in the way that they've they've done this. And you know, uh, yeah, probably the best step change in how they do cartoon style since Cuphead, which is probably pushing ten years old now, I guess. Um, so no, it must be. It's got to be. Uh, I mean, it's it doesn't. It doesn't feel like it, but it's got to be. I'll look I mean, it up surely in a minute, it's but... like yeah. 80 years old. It's how long, sorry? Uh, surely it's about 80 years 80. old. 80, <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, uh, 2017, so it's seven years oh, old. Right. So it's getting there, yeah. but wow, God. wow. Yeah, okay. It's still, it's, yeah. It's, yeah, wow. it's still scary. But yes, so that that's why. So it, did, it didn't show up at the time, but that's why it's my number two. I absolutely loved it by the end i was enjoying it more and more and more to the point where i i almost like i wanted to just start it again straight away i didn't have the time but i wanted to runs 
perfectly on the Steam Deck, like absolutely beautifully. Yeah. Uh, and it's just a, a fantastic beat 'em up, amazing. So yeah, yeah. It's, um, so on accessibility, um, you can choose to ignore the rhythm stuff, which is great. Um, and I'm thankful to the developers for that um, because it's Tango and Bethesda and they're not known always for their accessibility but the fact that I was able to play about some of it I've not played enough of it really yet um, that I could play it and not feel that I was missing out completely because I can't do rhythm sections um, or you know I, what's that the BPM is that game the first person shooter one that's the um, one yeah bullets per yeah, yeah I could have played that for, for, for oh, yeah um but yeah, it's, it's 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 a vital part, but it's also you can turn it off. Brilliant, well done. Um, I think it was um, Crypt of the Necro Dancer as well did it, where you could turn off the rhythm action stuff as like the rhythm stuff as well. So always kudos to that. Visually, um, it's this is what if the Jet Set Radio remake reboot whatever it is doesn't look like this when it comes out and goes for the uh, Bomb Rush Cyberpunk uh, look, then they've made a mistake because you've nailed it. This is the closest video game to playing Into the Spider-Verse. Um, and there's a couple of little moments in it that I swear are nods to that. Um, there's a couple of poses in, 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 um, in cinematics that he does. Um, there's a couple of ways that there's there's bits that happen on screen. Um, and I, I, I almost want to go, if they do make a Spider-Verse game, can we give it to, to this team, please? Because I think they would make it look perfect. Uh, because it's, honestly, that's how it feels at points. The mix of animation styles are there, obviously, because nothing that would be too much to do uh, for uh, at the moment. But yeah, the animations there, the, the way the characters move, um, it's a it's a new level in cartoon style uh, video games, and it's yeah, it's really really good. And I think I might boot it up once I've finished my uh, playthroughs of Cyberpunk and stuff, um, and actually give it the attention it deserves. Well, you, you could uh, you could do worse because it's yeah. I think it was a lot of people's you know one of their favourites of the year, and uh, you know just jumped out of nowhere. Shadow dropped, you know February wasn't it or something? It was crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Beginning of February to January, it's about probably about a year old now. Yeah, uh, wow, let me have a look. Nice stuff. Oh, do you know what? As we recorded this yesterday, we could have wished it happy birthday, Stu. Twenty fifth of January. 2023 oh, amazing. and it's the 26th as we recalled yeah. so there you go, there you go. Um, happy birthday but yeah so from the the highly i'm gonna to say toxic it's not toxic what's the uh, high high tempos of high five rush to the sweet sullen sounds of the highland song my number two game of the year, which was also at one point my number one game of the year. It really was until the day before we actually recorded the first episode is, is a Highland song, which you didn't get on with. Um, and we've got a history of, I think, we, me and you, when it comes to these sort of games, are, are a part of, of what we think about <laughs> these sort of games. Yeah. Um, and this kind of encompasses a couple of games. Um, and I only wanted to put one in there. So it kind of encompasses Planet of Lana 2. Uh, not Planet of Lana 2, because there's only been one Planet of Lana, but oh, as well as, uh, because I really love that. But this eclipses Planet of Lana for me. And so I only wanted to put one in there, and Highland Song gets the nod. For me, it was just a pure emotional journey. You start off and the story builds and there's, um, like, I, I think the way there's survival mechanics in there, but without it being too overbearing at times, that the musical elements, and this is rhythm act, it's not rhythm act, it's a rhythm based game at parts as well. But again, it's not overbearing, it's not actually difficult. It can be turned off or slowed down or whatever you want to make it more adjustable for you. Um, it's kind of got this element where this is just this journey all the way through. Um, and whilst I'm looking back at it, I think mechanically, I think a lot of other people are right. Well, I don't think it's as good as what it could be mechanically or as good as other games mechanically. That is superseded for me by the emotion that the music brings in and the story brings in and the, the world you're in brings in. Just overdoes, like basically takes over 
any slight misgivings I might have myself with with the mechanics uh, because they are fine. They are like Planet Alana. They are just a means to tell a story. Like Vember earlier, they're just a means to tell a story. And I think what you get out of it really, really depends on how emotionally affected you get by the story and the way the story's told and the ambience that's, that's around the game as well. And it hit me at a perfect time where I it, I was like, it's build, build up to Christmas is coming, I'm stressed and I'm like, I, I'm worried because like, if I can't give, like, my, my kids don't have the best of everything because we don't have the money to do like everything for them that, that others get. You see other kids going, oh, we're going to we'll do this, it's on our list and whatever. You, you know you're going to get to the day, uh, but I know I'm going slightly off tangent here, but you're going to get to the day, you see massive piles of stuff that all the other kids have got or families have done. And you're like, oh, we can't do that for ours. So what we do is just extra effort for them. So something that can relieve that stress and take me away in such a way was always going to hit me in the right places. And the Highland Sod does that so immensely well because there are moments where there are moments of stress in there, but they are then so sandwiched perfectly by moments of calm and moments of discovery. And it just hit me in the right way at the right time. I don't think I'm going to look back at it in... 10 years like i will cyberpunk for example go oh my god that's an all-timer but game of the year list i don't think need to be about all-timers they need to be about what's right in the year and this one hit me at the right time in the year for the right reasons and it's just yeah it's still with me today i still look back at it with such fond memories but it is just pipped as my number one but oh my god it is just the experience i had with it um hyperbole i I, you know i don't do hyperbole often we know that's true okay we know i don't do hyperbole um no, no i'm calm collected but it was yeah it was beautiful beautiful game yes yeah i mean it undeniably got a great um underlying story uh visually it's beautiful i think that the music is 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 you know quite fascinating as well and the rhythm side of it is a is a really good idea um i think the way that they've they composed and thought about splitting up the gameplay sections was a good idea um Mm -hmm. i'm deliberately not talking about anything negative because i don't think it's the right place in the the top 10 of the year um and i think that pretty much everything that they set out to do they did at the very least really 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 well so yeah yeah i think it's got so much to recommend it um it's not for me but again doesn't mean i would not watch somebody else play it and enjoy the immersion in that world because it's it's a world i think that deserves to exist you know as a this is why you refunded weren't it <laughs> well yes <laughs> but... yeah uh, that's fair enough absolutely fair <laughs> enough um it's but i think it leads not not you refunded that's just that was just a quip but um a leads of discussion is does the genre matter or is there a history of a genre that we expect certain things from that genre? Because there's been two games released now that are technically platformers where the platforming is just a means to progress rather than the main idea in the game. Both Planet Alana and A Highland Song. And people seem to expect they want something from this. They want puzzles that are difficult. They want challenge. Whereas I don't think either of these games are designed to have challenging sections as such. And I don't know what they could, how they could have presented this game differently or how they could have made this game differently that you would get the same effect. I think it needed to be that platformer. But it's a, it's a really weird, it's almost in a way a 2D walking simulator as is Planet of Lana. Um, and, but I think the fact that it gets framed as a platformer, because that is the genre it is, I think it has a negative impact with what people expect from the game, rightly and wrongly, um, for whatever reason. And I mean, it's a discussion we'll have down the line, I think. I don't think it's a discussion for now. As you said, this is a top 10 of the year uh, and stuff like that. But yeah, I get why some people bounced off it and why some people didn't like it. And who knows, maybe if I'd have played this uh, another time, I might have bounced off it 
Um, but yeah, as I said, sometimes it's the right game at the right time. Definitely, yeah, yeah, and yeah, we will have a debate about it. I think sometimes the the game the the narrative has to step out of the way of the gameplay, and sometimes yeah. vice versa. And finding that that edge where you have to do it, I think it can be can be quite tricky. But yeah, no, I think it's deservingly very high up on your list. I think it's impacted a lot of people in a very positive yes. way. Um, yeah, fantastic. Okay, good to see. Um, but anyway, you're on one side, Stu. I'm on the other, and it's, you know, we're balanced. But if one of us had a bit more of a, a wade opinion, shall we say, it might cause something to happen. What's your number one game, Stu? Yeah, it might cause a tilt in, in a certain direction. <laughs> and uh, yes, that segue was towards my number one, which may be a surprise. It's Xeno Tilt, which is... Oh, that's no surprise. <laughs> well, it isn't to you, definitely, because you know how good it is. But uh, Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it surprised me by how high up it is as well. But when I was thinking about what had the the ha- sort of happiest impact on me, what caused the, the most joy out of gaming in, in that year, and it was this game. And it's, you know, it's a pinball game. It does exactly what it sets out to do. It does what it says on the tin. It doesn't do any more than that. But somehow it still manages to be exceptional in all the right ways and it's it's it really is exceptional it the the mechanics are so beautifully done the table is exciting and remains exciting even when you've seen pretty much everything it can do the the effects are great they really drive the kind of impact of everything the physics just perfectly balanced it's really difficult but without being punishingly hard um, it caters for people who are total crap at it, like me, but also right up to people who are actually competent, like you. And uh, yeah, it, exactly. So I and I put like I think to date I've put at least twenty five hours into it. And considering games can last, you know, if you you want to, if you if you lose a, a ball after about thirty seconds, which I frequently do, you're going to you re- restart. You're gonna restart. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's quite an astonishing amount of time. And yeah, it's just one of those completely compulsive. Every time I go back to it, I'm com- utterly fascinated by it. I love the fact that it's got um, a rotation. You can rotate the screen. And every now and again, I'll stick it on my big screen just so I can rotate the screen and have it that way. But uh, it's just a magnificent example of its and genre. You get Mel stood there holding your screen, your big TV up, don't you? That's what she stays behind the TV, turning it and holding oh, it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. There are cardboard boxes and blue tack <laughs> involved. It's all that, yeah. <laughs> But, yeah, just an absolutely amazing game. I've loved it. Yeah, it's for a couple of things. Right? This was in my honourable mentions list. I, I, the re- only reason I think when we done a couple of honourable mentions at the start of the original episode, we might not have, I can't remember, I thought we did. But the reason I didn't mention this was because I knew this was not your number one. And I thought, I'm not going to mention it and when I know it's your number one. So, But, yeah, this is so good. This was so close to being in my actual list. Um uh, the fact it's a single table is um, amazing. Um, and there's still so much to do within it. Um, the physics, just to point out, for anyone who's expecting pinball physics, it's not one-to-one pinball physics. There's um, some creative license given with the way the balls travel at times and stuff like that. But it's a video game. It's not a pinball game. It's a video game with pinball mechanics. So accept it. Um, it's a throwback to some of the old like Windows 95 or three, Windows 3.1 pinball games, um, Sonic Spinball, stuff like that, with the way that it's presented, like like the, the single screen that moves with you and stuff like that, and it's purely top-down rather than the modern recreations of actual pinball tables. Um, and I, I really, really like that. But then it does, it's taken those and Pac-Man Championship editioned it uh, with just lights and neon and noise and everything all over the place and an amazing, like, rock anthem to it that goes on. Um, the Demon's Tilt, which is the prequel to this, or, like, the original to this, does the same, and it's just like, but this is better than Demon's Tilt for me. Um, it's just, just something amazing. Um, it's, like, a million times better than Kiss Psycho Pinball, whatever one that was. Um, 
uh, but it's just oh I, I yeah I dip in and out and have a go every now and again uh, but I can't get near my my top score at the moment I, mean, I know there's a couple of other pinball people that have played it have got into the the billion plus scores and I've got to try and reach that uh, because yes I'm competent but the pinball wizards are uh, yeah that they put me to shame um, but yeah oh yeah it's I'm so glad you like you're giving this the attention I think it deserves uh, because it is so so good and I don't think enough people have played it I'm looking at the like the review all reviews on um, on Steam it's only got like 275 and it deserves so so much more it deserves so much more than that because it's that damn good. Um, and it lacks some accessibility features, I'm not going to lie. Um, but uh, at the same time, you are different views to it. You can zoom in, you can zoom out and do it as you want. And there is a feel to it. And you can just about the screen movement actually is really good to give you an idea of where that ball might be um, before like to allow you to sort of get that focus in. And it's just, oh, I just, it's just wonderful. It's a really wonderful, wonderful game. Um, and yeah, that's a great choice for number one. Yeah. Cheers. It's, um, it's very deserving of it. I think, uh, uh, you know, it'll get so little coverage because it's so niche. Um, but it does what it does pretty much perfectly, and like you say, it's it's got its own. It, it uses real physics to, for the most part, but it will it will fudge them, which is perfect. I mean, that's what you do with football games in in you know video games, um, mm-hmm. and it doesn't have all the accessibility that it needs. It's still technically in early access. I mean, I'm not sure mm-hmm. how much is going to change in the quote unquote full release, but yeah. I, for me, it feels as though I won't, I won't stay on it long, but it's important to mention. I feel what they're going is like: how much can we make alterations to its look and feel without fundamentally changing how the game looks? Uh, and for me, I'm like, nah, you should stop worrying about that because people with people who have accessibility issues, they don't care about that. They care about being able to play it. You know, that's yeah. all that matters. Stop worrying about it. Follow, you know do what they did with spider-man if you want to make a high contrast mode that makes it look like it doesn't look like a spider-man game because the thing is it will feel like a spider-man game to the people who are playing it with the accessibility options now i'm not saying this is exactly the thought process and what's going on over at flurb and and whatever but you know you know if that's what's in your mind you're worried about retaining the game's character don't worry about it. Just make it as accessible as you possibly can, and you get you know it'll widen the audience a little bit. But more than that, it's an important step in in how these games are developed. So yeah. So yeah, absolutely great choice for your number one. I can't even think of a good segue from pinball to to this one. Um, you know, you've cooked up a bit of a storm there, Stu. So I'm gonna have to go against it. Always, always find a way. Because my number one game is Against the Storm. Nice segue. Um, nice one. Which, yeah, which wasn't originally in my list or my thinking because I originally started playing this in 2022 in Early Access. Um, and it came out of Early Access in December. And I started playing it again. And it is so, 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 so good. It's a roguelite city builder um which i know again uh, i'm not even going to try and send it to you because i know it's not your sort of thing that's like <laughs> two job was uh you're just you're just off now <laughs> you're gonna leave the room I'm as gone. it stands I'm gone. yeah yeah um but it's a base building city builder roguelite um, essentially the idea is with so many city builders, the problem is you build um, these these cities and you start off really well. And it's all nice and complex and you're making what you want to make and then it expands and all of a sudden it just gets overwhelming. You're like, oh, oh I've probably messed this up. And you start again. And you're like, you get to that same point, maybe a bit further, you start again because it's got overwhelming and trying to manage networks between cities and rail routes and stuff like that. You're like, oh, I can't do this. My head's battered. Um so what they've done with Against the Storm, uh, uh, Evermite Games, sorry. Uh, what they've done is they've got, right, okay, what's the best bits of the city build? This is the beginning, the beginning of like that blank canvas. Um, and they said, right, I'll tell you what we'll do. 
there's this world changing event that's happening a massive storm um that's going to ruin the world um every every number of days um and you've basically got to go and create these settlements um allow people to live so they can give offerings to the gods essentially and um make the gods happy that that's what you've got to do so you go in and you get certain tasks and you get these two bars essentially go up a good bar and a bad bar if the good bar goes up you successfully build a settlement um that's that's happy and could give things good to the god if the red bar hits first then oh you've not done it and you give negative gifts to the gods essentially um, but you, you do it and then you finish you you do all your little tasks and asking the task might be do some trading with another with another settlement or it might be i oh, go and like cut these trees down to get into this new area um, and you so you do that um, and then you get points for tasks you've also get might get points for oh have have like 20 beavers homed and happy for 10 minutes so you that that might be or provide jerky for these 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 um for these lizard people lizards as well not lizard people they're lizards um we're not going conspiracy um and there's harpies and there's different creatures they all live in harmony and, and stuff like that and you build and you do the things you do the tasks and then you give your offerings, you expand out further, you unlock new stuff, new mysteries, you then complete a little settlement, you go out further, and then at one point you have to go, right, can I complete another settlement, or do I need to hit the, like, the uh, storm's coming button? And you hit the storm's coming button, everything's wiped out, and you get a score. That score then gives you supplies or, or resources and bits that you can go and unlock perks, um, or, or loads of other little, like, things that allow you to build settlements in a better quicker way so you can build your settlement quicker give better offerings expand out further expand out further and get new things and it's just basically rinse and repeat rinse and repeat all the best bits of a city builder with the roguelite elements that are in there um it's really well controlled the each city can take between i want to say about half an hour to an hour and a half but you can stay with a city and go back if you want and keep it building if you really want to but it's these elements of just building these small settlements um and make it and just expand it they can get quite large it's just this building small expanding to the point where you go i'm done with this now i'm either going to succeed or i'm going to fail but i'm done and failure is not the end failure is a part of it because it's a roguelite so you need to fail sometimes to learn to get better and the failure gives you points as well just it's different types of points can be used for other things and it's just all blends together so so well um and i'm 30 odd hours 40 hours into the game so far and i still not touched everything about it i i played a, like i probably played like 20 odd hours nearly 30 hours in early access and then went right i'm done let's see what the full games come out the full game come out and i've stuck another 10 to 15 hours into it already um and it's just it's absolutely brilliant visually it's it's beautiful it's got a great style to it it's very easy to follow what's what to see like where paths are what people are doing where they're going how to manage people the ui is really good and improved over the early access they've listened to feedback in terms of accessibility on the steam deck it's one of the best builders i've played on a steam deck because one it's got controller support but also the community profiles that people made during early access are just absolutely spot on absolutely spot on that i don't even go back to like the official because the community profile is so so good as well uh, but you can use the official one and it plays just as good it's just a couple of little extras they put in are just worth having uh, and oh yeah it's so good it's, it's, it's my game of the year i'm one of my all-timers as well because it's that damn good wow god that's fantastic yeah uh, yeah Stu didn't like it <laughs> i wouldn't like it no it's not even one of those i would actually watch um which is no yeah but i mean yeah that's the, the beautiful tapestry of gaming isn't it that there's so much for everybody but it's it's great that it fills that niche and it's great that you you kind of Followed through on that, you know, thing of you, you often say, oh, I've been playing this, it's in early access, I'm going to stop now, and I'm going to come back to it when it's fully done, 
you know either you forget or yeah but sometimes you do but i mean you know you you promised that you would do that for things and you've done it for this and it's become one of your all timers so <laughs> that sounds like one of those roundabout ways of going yeah you never follow <laughs> stuff usually so <laughs> no 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 such a disappointment Brad. no i didn't mean that honest <laughs> <laughs> no 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 it's brilliant that you've uh that, that, yeah, you've re- you recognised it, and uh, hopefully everybody else does as well. Oh yeah, no, if you've got a chance, I mean, it's done well uh, as well. Um, so I'm looking at the Steam reviews number, and there's nineteen and a half thousand uh, overwhelmingly positive reviews for it. So I don't think I'm like like this unearthed gem um, for people, but uh, you know, nineteen thousand's not exactly massive numbers in video games these days um but it's not totally unheard of but if yeah if you've got any interest in a city builder uh, resource management even road lights there's something there for you um it's just yeah it's brilliant um and yeah i i can't think of two better number one games to have zeno till is so so good <laughs> against the storm is so so good as well and yeah yeah it's been a great year and there's loads we haven't spoke about and we're not going to speak about this week maybe next week we'll do a full on honourable mentions just run down a quick list without even giving our thoughts because there are so many games that we that have bypassed us that we've not even mentioned that probably like could have made our top tens um, but didn't yeah. for whatever reason uh, because it's ever changing very true very true what a year yeah fantastic stuff mm. Um, so just before we go uh, because this is just a a second part of our top tens our game of the years um, a few bits that are happening on on the site Um, one there's more written content Um, so I am doing myself um, a weekly indie roundup so it'll be one a week from two to four games will be in there depending on what I've played blame cyberpunk Blame a AAA game for not the indie coverage that I, I want to be doing. Um, but yeah, so there'll be like indie roundup every week. We plan on doing, um, hopefully starting later this week or, or next week in time for the start of February, um, our picks of the month, um, which will be just a very similar format to the indie roundup. Me and Jill will both pick a game. Doesn't necessarily have to have been released that month. It could be an old game. It could be a brand new game. It could be something that was released a couple of months ago that we've missed and only just got around to playing. Something we've been playing continuously that we've enjoyed. But we'll pick our game every month, um, each of us. And, you know... Maybe there'll be some repeats in there, but that's what will go towards our um, our must-play recommendations. I was just picking about a thin air stuff that I enjoyed. Occasionally getting Stu to chip in and stuff like that and just putting a little badge on the site. Instead of that, we're going to pick our game each month uh, that we like, and that's going to be our must-play for January 2024, February 24, etc., etc. On YouTube... Uh, I've started to do some Steam Deck footage of games I've been playing with no commentary. Eventually, I'll add some commentary to some of those um, as I decide I'm confident enough to start doing it again. But at the moment, I'm just doing little five-minute clips of games I've been playing, mainly emulated stuff on the Steam Deck, just so you can see how it runs uninterrupted. Um, so like the footage won't be edited down uh, because I, I don't like that. When they edit down the footage and it's like, oh, uh, just... What, what are you trying to hide? I don't like that. Just go, just go raw. Just go raw. So it's raw footage of what I've been playing. Might only be first five, ten minutes or a random five-minute chunk. But, yeah, that's going on the YouTubes. Um, and I'm sure there'll be other stuff down the line. I'm sure some of it I'll forget to do, uh, especially on the YouTube front. But on the whole, there is stuff coming uh, because... This year, I think it's going to be a bit of a struggle maintaining the site financially. Um, I will always continue to do it. I will never accept sponsorship. Um, I've had sponsors come to me and I've said, do one. Um, And guest articles and stuff like that when they're willing to pay, not having it. Um, It's us. What you get is just pure fault. It's never clouded by publishers or advertisers or anything like that. So Patreon, uh, Coffee or Ko-Fi, whatever it is, if you can, great. If not, we will try and push through as best we can. Uh, but this is where we get catch 22 or rock on a hard place, roundabouts, whatever it is. I can't remember what the phrase is. We obviously want support. Um, and to get that support, we need to give you extra content. We understand that. But 
we need the support to do the extra content at the same time. Um, and I don't mean that as a bribery or trying to guilt trip anyone. It just gets very hard to do certain things where you've got to make extra little expenses and so on and so forth and find the time to do it. Um, so hosting costs, things like that, being able to maybe spend out on a bit of recording equipment, all little bits like that will all help with that in the future. So our promise to you to 2024 is we will still continue to give you whatever we can, but any support you could give would be wonderful. Um, but that's it. There's no demands. Okay, no pressure, no demands, but it it would be wonderful. Uh, and I think it's about time that I hand over and shut up. Mm. No, it's a, it a good summary though. And <laughs> yeah, any support you can give always helps and helps us develop and move forward and stuff like that. But yeah, no, so that's great. I hope you enjoyed the breakdown of 2023. And it's probably, as we say, more to come just because it was such a big year. But in the meantime, yeah, follow us on all the socials, consume all of our content on the website. Look at us on YouTube and look at all the new videos that we've been put up, especially uh, recently I was watching some of the Xenia ones that you've been done by yourself, bro. Yes. Very good. That's looking really good, Xenia, at the moment, yeah. the uh, emulation on that. We might talk about that next week. Why not? Yeah. Well, that's in the meantime. I said I'd shut up, un- but I didn't shut up. <laughs> in the meantime, <laughs> until next week, stay safe and stay sane. <laughs>